Hello and welcome to the 741 channel. Thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to be taking a close look at this Drake TR7 ham radio transceiver. So I've made a couple of videos on this radio already. If you haven't seen them, the first one was sort of an overview of the radio and all the accessories I got with it and how I came to own this radio. The second video was more of a detailed look at the PS7 power supply. I sort of went through it, cleaned it up, tested it out, and made sure it was working good. In this video, what I'm going to do is get the cover off the radio, look inside, and kind of inspect everything, and try and take care of a few little small problems that I found during my initial overview of the radio. So the first thing I'm going to do is address the cooling fan that's on the back. Now there's actually nothing wrong with it. It works just fine on the radio. The only problem I have with it is that it's kind of loud. So what I'm going to do is pull it off the radio, see if I can get some of the specs from it, take some measurements, and see if I can find a suitable replacement that's a little quieter. So after doing some research on the Drake Owners Facebook group, I decided that I'm going to replace the fan. Somebody had made a post in there about a nice quiet fan that they bought from Amazon. So I'm going to see if that's any quieter than this one. Now just for reference, what I'm going to do is record some audio of the fan with the camera. The microphone is about two feet away from the fan as it sits now. And I also have an app here loaded on my smartphone that'll work kind of like a decibel meter. So we'll do a check with the old fan and then I'll do the same test with the new one when I get it. Okay, so hopefully you heard the fan running there and it looked like from the sound meter here on the smartphone it was averaging right around 55 decibels or so. Just for reference, the background noise in the room here with everything turned off is about 34 decibels. So like I said, let's see what happens when we get the new fan. Hopefully it's quieter. So here's a look at the fan that I just pulled off. You can see the label on it now. This is actually an old Radio Shack fan. So like I said, it was working just fine on there, just a little bit noisy. So we'll see what the new fan does when I get it. So for now, I'm going to pull the cover off and we'll take a look inside and see what's going on. Here's a look inside the radio. Everything actually looks cleaner than I thought it would be. The only real dust that's in here is sort of in the final section where the fan was blowing in. So what I'm going to do is take this outside and kind of blow whatever dust is in here out of here. And then we'll take a closer look at everything. Now that I've got all the dust blown out of here, let's take a tour of the inside of the radio. Before we do that, I want to mention that I've done some research on the internet, specifically the WB4HFN Drake Radio website. That's a great resource if you have any Drake radio, including the TR7. I encourage you to visit that website, and I'll leave a link to it in the description below. Anyway, I'm going to use a diagram that I found on that website to help kind of guide us through the tour. So I've got the radio oriented so the top front is over here and the back of the radio where the antenna connector is here. So starting back here, this is the low pass filter output board. This is the antenna changeover relay and this is the low pass filter input board. This board here is the high pass filter assembly. This, of course, is the main speaker. So this big board here that's horizontally mounted is actually the display driver board. You can see all the display driver and logic chips here. Now underneath this board, there are a bunch of other vertical boards plugged into essentially a motherboard on the bottom of the radio. Now based on the research I saw on the website, this board is very difficult to remove. So I'm not going to try and pull it off so that we can see the boards under it. But I will flip the radio over later so we can see the bottom of the motherboard or what Drake calls the parent board. So the boards that are located under here that we can't see right now are a digital board, the transmit exciter, an up converter board, a VCO board, and a translator board. Now later on I'm going to remove this cover and that should reveal some more boards that we should be able to get at, including the IF switch board, the IF filter board, and a passband tuning board along with an IF audio board. But again, we'll take a closer look at those once I get this cover off. This over here, of course, is the power amplifier and heatsink module. And then this board here with all these controls on it is the power supply board. And then under this part of the digital board is the PTO tuning assembly. So I flipped the radio over now 
So this is the bottom of the front panel and the antenna connector is over here in this corner toward the surface of the table. So the main board that we're looking at here is the bottom side of what Drake calls the parent board or the motherboard. All of those other boards that we couldn't see are mounted vertically below this board and kind of plug into connectors that are mounted on it. This small board right here is the ALC board and then over here we're looking at the bottom of the low pass filter boards. This of course over here is the bottom of the heat sink that is connected to the power amplifiers. And then over here you can see the bottom of some of the switches and controls mounted to the front panel. And then you can see there's a big wiring harness kind of surrounding this, all zip tied up and soldered to various points on the parent board. So next up I'm going to pull this cover off so I can get at some of the boards that are underneath it. So here's what things look like without the cover on. The board I'm interested in is this one right here. This is the filter board. As you may be able to see there's two silver cans here and these are the two filters. So originally in my first video I pointed out that I thought the radio had a 2.3 kilohertz sideband filter and a 6 kilohertz AM filter. But I wasn't sure of that. So what I want to do is pull this board out and actually look at these filters and see what the markings are. So I should be able to just pull this board out like I would a card in a computer, but there's not a lot of room to get my fingers in there. So I'm going to try and use this pair of pliers to help me pull this up. So I'm going to pull this straight up, but I can already see that there is a wire or maybe two attached to it. So I'm going to go kind of carefully. So here's a look at the filter board. What I found out from looking at the WB4HFN website is that there is a mod to this board that can be made that sort of bypasses the filter slot and sort of acts like an AM filter. Now I wasn't certain if that had been done to this radio or if it had the actual filter in it. And as you can see, it does have the filter. And that's a good thing because these AM filters, I guess, are somewhat rare and hard to find. So I'm glad that I've got that one in the radio. So I'm going to take a step back for a minute and talk about something I observed when I first got the radio and I pointed out in the first video that I made. When I put the radio in AM mode and did a transmit test, when I looked at the signal on an SDR, I noticed that instead of getting a normal AM signal, the radio was only really putting out the carrier and I believe the upper sideband. After reading through the website, I found out that that's actually normal for these radios. There's nothing wrong with it. Now the reason for that is that when the radio transmits, it actually routes all of the transmit power through the filter that's located in the first slot. And in this case, it happens to be the sideband filter. So what that means is when I transmit with the radio, because I have a sideband filter in the first slot, I lose one of the sidebands during transmit. So there's a couple ways around that. The first way would be to take and swap the two filters. I could put the AM filter in the first slot and the sideband filter in the second slot. But then what would happen is when I transmit in sideband, the radio would actually transmit both sidebands at the same time, which is definitely undesirable. So we don't want to do that either. So I took a look at the website and there's a way around this. So what it looks like is I can do some cuts and jumps and repurpose a switch in an indicator lamp in order to switch in the AM filter when I go to AM mode. So eventually I want to do that mod so that I can transmit on AM and have a nice clean signal and kind of join in with a couple of my friends that operate old boat anchors on AM. But for right now in, in this video I'm not going to do that mod. I'll save that for some point in the future. But what I think I am going to do in this video is take one of the empty filter slots and do the bypass mod on it. So effectively what that does is it bypasses the filter altogether and it allows the radio to pass an even wider chunk of bandwidth than the AM filter does. That's useful for listening to wide AM signals like broadcast. So I want to try it and see what happens and compare it to what things sound like with the AM filter. I'm really curious more than anything else. And it's a pretty simple mod. All we have to do is solder a resistor in here and we should be good to go. Okay, so I'm going to do that now while I've got the filter board out. I'm going to use a 470 ohm quarter watt resistor. I'm going to put it in this open slot on my filter board. I'm going to solder one lead of the resistor to this plated through hole 
and the other one to this plated through hole. So according to the article on the website, which I'll link below, the value of the resistor is not super critical. A lower value resistor is probably going to pass more signal through to the radio, but may result in front end overload. A higher value resistor is going to pass a little bit less signal, but should prevent overload of the receiver. The other thing that the author of the article mentioned is that the wattage rating of the resistor isn't critical, but he used the 2 watt resistor because the diameter of the leads on those resistors fit these holes nicely. So the closest resistor I had in my junk box to the 450 ohm that the author used was this 470 ohm quarter watt resistor. But he indicated in the article that the wattage rating wasn't important because there isn't a lot of power being passed through. So the next thing I'm going to do wasn't mentioned in the article, but I'm going to do this because I think it's probably a good idea. I'm going to put a piece of insulating Kapton tape on the board to insulate where the resistor leads will be so they don't short out to this solder plated surface. So I've got the tape down, I've got the leads bent on my resistor, and I'm going to drop it into the plated through holes now. So I've got the board all set and ready to solder. The solder and iron is heating up. I'm actually going to put a little flux on here just because the board is kind of old <laughs> and actually the resistor is too. So this is going to help the solder flow a little better. So that should do it. I'm going to clean this board up a little bit with some isopropyl and then we should be ready to reassemble everything. So now I'm going to drop the filter board back into its slot. I'm going to go slow, make sure these wires don't pinch, and make sure the connectors on the board line up with the pins on the parent board down below. Now what I'll do is get these little rubber grommets that are on each of the wires seated back into the chassis wall. So here's a look at the new fan and the old fan side by side. Now physically they're about the same size and the mounting locations should be identical, so this should bolt right up to the drake without any issue. Now the specs on the fans are a little bit different. The voltage of course is the same, but the RPM is different. The new fan runs at 2000 RPM and flows 28 CFM, whereas the old fan runs at 3100 RPM and has a rating of about 35 CFM. So this fan's actually gonna flow a little bit less air. That's one of the reasons why it should be quieter. But I think it's going to flow enough air for what I'm going to do with this radio. And based on what I've read on the Drake forums, other people are using this fan with success with the radios. So the fan feels pretty solid. The outer structure of it is metal, just like the old one. It's got a fair amount of heft, although I think it is slightly lighter than the old one. But unlike the old fan, the new one has a separate power cord that has to be plugged in, whereas the old one has it sort of integrated. The new fan also comes with some mounting hardware and a couple of protector grills. So anyway, what I'm going to do now is measure out this cord and cut it down to length so I have a short little pigtail to plug into the back of the radio. So I've got the fan all ready to go. I trimmed up the wire, put some shrink tubing over the solder joints that I made. Now another thing that I forgot that I was going to have to do was grind down the hump on the polarized end of the plug so that it'll fit in this non-polarized receptacle on the back of the radio. Now normally you wouldn't want to defeat the polarization on a plug like this, but for this application I think it'll be okay. Keep in mind, if you were to plug this into a regular electrical outlet after the modification and you plug it in backwards, you could get a nasty shock. There's some debate out there whether or not this fan should be oriented to blow in toward the radio or suck air out of the radio and blow out. I think I'm going to Mount this so that it blows air into the radio. And the reason I'm going to do that is because the old fan was actually oriented that way. It seemed to work okay. I know you shouldn't always believe what you see on the internet, but I did read through some forum posts and it seems like more people than not prefer to have the fan blow in on the radio. So that's what I'm going to do on this one. So here's what the fan looks like all mounted up and plugged in. And I wasn't able to use the hardware that was supplied with the fan because it's designed to go through the entire body of the fan and the thread pitch of these screws doesn't match what's tapped into the 
chassis of the radio. This is probably metric and I'm sure the radio is in freedom units. So we were going to have a mismatch. So anyway, I had some hardware that fit. And you may have noticed that the hardware is set up so that the nut is on the outside. And that's because it didn't fit on the inside because of the way the fan is made. You also may have noticed they've only got three. And that's because there is a plastic piece on the fan over here that doesn't even allow the head to fit. But that should hold it on just fine and prevent me from getting my fingers stuck in there at some point. One last thing before I put the cover on. I actually wrote down a little information about the radio. The previous owners that I know who have owned this radio, George Smith, KD1FN, Don Izzo, W1FYG, and myself, and one nug Now, of course, I don't know if anybody ever owned this before George did, but if this radio ever passes on to anyone in the future, at least it's documented that George, Don, and I had this radio. So I've cleaned up the cover and I've put it back on the radio, but you may be able to notice that it's a little bit weather-worn. So I learned a trick on how to clean these up from a guy that buys and sells at ham fests. Basically what he would do is he'd buy a radio cheap at a ham fest, bring it back to his truck, do this trick, and then turn around and make a hundred bucks <laughs> without doing another thing. All he would do is take some WD-40, put a little bit on a rag like this, and just kind of work it into the cover. And what it does is it works to just kind of hide some of those blemishes and fading and then wipe the excess off and you can see right away it looks better in that middle spot. I'll do the rest of the cover and we'll come back and see what it looks like when I'm done. And there it is all cleaned up. Now it's not perfect but it's a lot better than what it was and it was only about a couple minutes worth of effort to do this. Now if you end up trying something like this on your radio make sure you test it on an inconspicuous spot first to make sure that it's not actually going to damage the finish of your radio. I tested this one first underneath, made sure it was going to be okay, and then did the rest of it. And like I said, it turned out just fine. The only downside with the WD-40 treatment is that, well, the radio now smells a little bit like WD-40, but that'll dissipate over the next day or two and won't notice it after a while. So now that I have the new fan installed, let's test it out and see how loud it is compared to the old one. I've got the radio position more or less just like it was when we did the first test, and I've got the app loaded up here, so let's fire the radio up and check it out. So as you saw, we were averaging somewhere around 50 or 51 decibels. So not quite as quiet as I hoped it would be. But this fan doesn't have that high-pitched kind of noise to it that the old one did, so it's a lot more tolerable from that regard. I'm going to put a sound clip of both side by side here now so you guys can hear the difference. So I've got the Drake all set up here. I even built the new shelf so I had room for everything. So what I think I'm going to do now is just enjoy the radio for a couple of weeks. And then when I have some time, I'm going to pull it back out, put it on the bench, and then what I think I'll do is try the AM transmit mod so that when I switch over to AM and transmit, we get both sides of the signal passing through the filter. And then if I feel brave enough, <laughs> maybe I'll get on 3885 and talk to the AM guys. We'll see. One step at a time. But I guess that's it for now. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to follow along and see more about the Drake or any of the other stuff that I'm working on, hit the subscribe button. And if you want to support my channel in another way, please consider taking a look at my Amazon store, which is linked in the description below.